Hi, I'm Mark Crossley, and you're listening to the Prawn Sandwich Podcast. How's the bacon, did you say? Welcome to the Prawn Sandwich Podcast, another episode of Series 4. I am Nathan Cupid, as usual, joined by Dylan McKenzie and Jamie Jackson. Hello. Hola. And this week's episode is another ex-pro episode. We're firing out the cannon now. Just boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Um, this week's episode is none other than former Gretna, Livingston, Ross County, Celtic Nation... He's just, Stenhouse Muir, Stenhouse Muir <laughs> Greenock Morton. There's honestly, he even said there's too many clubs. But anyways, did, this week's episode's Colin McMenamin. Um, a lovely, lovely man. Great it's interview. Just, great stories. Really good insight again. So absolutely. Just should we just launch it? Yeah, let's just dive into it. Colin McMenamin, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yes, there, there we, we go. go. Daft Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, mate? Not bad. How are you? Ah, good. 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 In the middle of moving, so my house is absolutely upside down. I have to find a gun <laughs> in the spare room. <laughs> it's a nightmare, isn't it? I, I moved ah, about it four months ago. I'm never moving again. I hope, where, where are you staying now? I'm a coming all just outside Glasgow. All oh, right, fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, commuting for the Annan job then. Commuting. I think everybody has to commute for the Annan job to be fair. <laughs> so, um, so you don't you don't get many special football players coming into Annan, so we've got to get them for everywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> pre season started, mate. Pre season your season starts tomorrow. Bloody oh, oh of course. Oh, football starts earlier. So it does. So we start tomorrow. Their first competitive games tomorrow in the, the Premier Sports Cup. Oh so, nice. Um, Ah, we're looking forward to getting going. Ah, spot on, spot on. Um, so thanks for coming on, mate. Really no appreciate worries. it. So we'll just uh, just fight straight into straight into business, then, eh? No worries, mate. So over five hundred games, over two hundred goals throughout your career. Um, pretty stellar stuff. What uh, started off in the youth youth system at Queen of the South and Annan, yeah? How did yeah, that's right. So moving. Exactly. Moving from Glasgow, growing up in Dumfries, uh, did you get picked up quite young? Ah, well, when, when I was, especially when I was young, you kind of do about every other youth player does, and you dive about all the different teams. Mm. Um, I was at Rangers for a bit, and I was at Motherwell, Dundee United, and stuff, and then uh, signed S for McQueen South. Um, obviously, my local team. I was living in Dumfries, and it was all kind of working out well. And then they told me I was too small, so uh, I just kind of chucked it. I didn't play football for a year. And I was just luckily that I just went and played amateur football in Dumfries with men when it was age of 16. And uh, luckily enough, Annan came in for me and I went and joined Annan at under 18s and was luckily enough to get into their full team, which was quite a good standard back then. Uh, it was kind of equivalent to the Lowland League in Scotland at the moment, where you've had a lot of success with Kelty and East Kilbride. So it worked out quite well for me. And uh, luckily enough, I, I got managed to take the first team at Annan. Oh, spot on. Um, so, how many how many seasons did you get in at Annan before Newcastle took a look at you? A season and a half. Um, they they came to lo- they came to watch myself and Ryan McGuffey. <coughs> All right. Um, and uh, the summer after our first season, um, I was on holiday with the boys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can I missed it. Um, and then we, they kept tracks on me after that. And it was lucky enough that they came and got me in the December to go down and trial after a year and a half at Annan. And uh, I played with on a Saturday and trained with Alan Sheeran on a Monday. It was, it was quite surreal. Oh, I bet. So the, uh, was it 2000 that you moved to Newcastle yeah. took place then. Mm-hmm. So 
That must have been quite the culture shock growing up in Greece <laughs> and then going over to the northeast. <laughs> it was, it was, um, it was even better because it, I don't know how PC your podcast is. Oh, you, but you, I you can swear. Range, range. <laughs> I had uh, my first day's training on a Monday was with the first team with Shearer and Dyer and Gary Speed because the reserves had a game, and then the second the reserves, the second day the reserves had their their warm down day, so it was with the first team again. And, the Tuesday night, I went to the Christmas night out oh. with, the, with the Newcastle first team. So on the Saturday night, I was out in Dumfries with my mates. And the Tuesday night, I was VIP in Newcastle on the Christmas night out. So um, it was definitely two different worlds for a wee guy for Dumfries. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was really enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, bet. I bet that must have been some eye-opener, that. It was a proper eye-opener. Um, <laughs> It was uh, well, being a wee Scottish guy, I was lucky that there was a few Scottish boys there. Um, we had the Caldwell brothers, Brian Kerr, Ryan McGuffey, and even in the first team, we had uh, Kevin Gallagher and Stephen Glass, and they kind of looked after us. So, the, the Tuesday night, Christmas night out in Newcastle, no knowing who to speak to, probably got about 40 quid in my pocket. Um, I was lucky enough that Kevin Gallagher and the Scottish boys kind of took me under, my, under their wing and looked after me. And I probably got a wee bit too pushed that night. But it was <laughs> oh, spot on. So, <clears throat> the uh, the two years that you spent at Newcastle then, did mm-hmm. you, uh, it was when we spoke to Skip in the previous yeah. interview, he said that Bobby Robson knew everybody throughout the course. Yeah. Did, you, did you have much dealings with uh, Sir Bobby? The it was the same as Skip. We, we were with him every day. Um, we were in about training every day. He'd always come and talk to you. But he would forget your names, like Skip said. He would mix people's names up. But he would come up to you and say, do you remember against Leeds six weeks ago? You missed that chance. You should have done this. And you're like, how the fuck do you remember that? <laughs> but he remembered everything, knew everything about you. Just didn't know your name half the time. <laughs> but um, no, listen, he was a gentleman. You'll not hear anybody have a bad word to say about him. So enthusiastic. I've, I've watched the documentary a couple of times and you've got me in the background when he's doing a passing session and I'm like, showed my boy it. I'm like, look, there's, there's your old dad. <laughs> um, and it's, it's I'm just very, very fortunate to have worked under him and luckily enough to have met him and had a really good couple of chats with him as well. Oh, that's great. Like, when you watch that documentary... Like mm. the, the players that say things about this, like Louis Figo, Gareth, no, no. Uh, like the original Ronaldo, and yeah, like they all absolutely love him. Like it's, we, we, I remember we played Man United. Say we, I was you knew I was close, but <laughs> I was in the squad, had to go suited up and that, and I took my mates down into the tunnel, and it was Ruud van Nistelrooy. He must have worked to him some point. Couldn't get enough of him, and he was like, boss, 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 coach, cuddling him and hugging him. I was just like, it shows you just where he's been in the game that players at the very top in the world game absolutely adore them. Nah. Um, and to be fair, his, his legacy is still living on now. You've got Jose Mourinho who worked under him. And, yeah. um, you'll get a lot more in the next few years, I'd imagine, that players that have worked with him and they'll all be, they'll all be using him as a, something that they can use as an experience. Nah, no, definitely. So those uh, two years at Newcastle, um, you say you mm-hmm. went away... Made a couple of first team squads, uh, mm-hmm. but um, it was moved to Livingston after that. Mm-hmm. How did that come about then? Did, uh... I, w- I was supposed to sign for Oldham. Oh. Um, Bobby's assistant was Mick Wadsworth, yeah. Yeah. and he'd left to go to Southampton when we were still at Newcastle. But I think it lasted, to, I can't remember who he went as assistant to, it lasted about six weeks. And Mick got the job at Oldham. And I was going there. It was all agreed. And you will be too young to remember. There was ITV Digital. Uh, and that, yeah. that went bust. <laughs> yeah. That went any administration. And they were the ones that were feeding the money through all the lower leagues in England at the time. So the, the deal got knocked out because of that. And I had to come back up to Scotland. And I spoke to a couple of teams up in Scotland. But I spoke to John Robertson who was, he's a bit of a Scottish legend. He played for Hearts in Scotland. And Not he was Forrest, a, John Robertson. 
No, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, John, if he's if he's Google him, yeah, I think he's got the record amount of goals for Hearts up here. Right. Okay. Um, he played for Scotland, went to World Cup, and he was a striking coach at Livingston. And uh, I think he scored the same amount of goals as like Ali McCoyst in Scotland. He was he really was up there. And uh, I just really wanted to go and work with him. Everything he said, Livingston had just finished third in the Premier League behind Celtic and Rangers. They were going to be playing in the UEFA Cup, and it's just it just kind of appealed to me. And I'm, I'm glad I went there because it was a really good club and a really good time. Uh, there was, uh, was it, remember David Fernandez playing for Livingston at the time? Yeah. And, uh, Marvin Andrews as well. Yeah. What, well, what was Marvin Andrews? <laughs> Championship manager legend, Marvin Andrews. Yeah, Marvin Andrews <laughs> <is a> legend. <laughs> <laughs> Big Marv was my roommate. So every time we went away trips, he was my roommate. So he got up at six o'clock in the morning. Don't know if he's know about too much about Marvin. Marvin's a pastor. Oh, and his yeah. new life church in Kirkcaldy. And uh, he'd got up at six o'clock in the morning doing his prayers at the side of the bed. I would just kid on, I was sleeping. Like, um, <laughs> and obviously, he's from Trinidad and he used to work in a beer factory. And he'd always bring you beers. Didn't he drink himself? He'd always sneak you in these Trinidad beers and stuff. Um, so he was a big legend, Marv, and I'm still in good touch. I'm in touch with Marv now. Um, but he was very good and got a good move to Rangers. Whereas, David was probably one of the best players I've ever played with. Um, done a podcast last year, the Livy podcast, and every single player that they've said who's the best you played with, it's always been Dav. He was phenomenal. Um, I think he's a scout for Barcelona or Real Madrid now. So uh, yeah. I, think that's, I think that goes to show you just how good a player he was. Um, so good to learn off. He was built kind of similar to me. Used his body well. And he he done really well, got his move to Celtic, and uh, was really lucky to play with some really good good players at that point. So, how how did you find going from playing reserve football for a couple of years? I know it was a better mm-hmm. standard back then. Um, yeah. going into playing first team football. It, it was just, it was a, it was quite gradual the way I done it because I had to prove myself again as I came up to Livingston. So it would start and I was on the bench every week and. A good five, six months I was always on the bench. So it was always gradual. So there wasn't that big step for me. Um, and to be fair, when we played reserve football at Newcastle, it was like proper reserve football. Like I've still got, well, there was somewhere that there was team sheets. We played David Ginola when he was at Aston Villa. We played Leeds and it was like Jonathan Woodgate, Lee Boyer. And you play against Man United, it was like Michael Stewart. Rooney was on the bench playing with Everton, with David Unsworth, and it was always top players that you were playing with. It wasn't that yeah. kind of under-21 or under-23 nonsense that kind of happens <laughs> now. It's uh, It was like proper... Anybody that did they play with the first team on a Saturday played on a Monday night. Yeah. So we were quite lucky to play with that. So it may be a bit different now. You'll see kids maybe struggle. But I, I came with playing on Monday nights with Shola Miobi, um James Coppinger, who's played at the top of the game for a long time. We went, we played with these boys every Monday night to go into first team where Livingston's first team probably weren't as good as Shola, probably weren't yeah. as good as Cops. And then our goalkeeper would have been like Steve Harper, who's played in the Premiership. Yeah. And then we had internationals in our reserve squad. So it was a bit different for us then. And uh, I kind of made that transition quite easily, but it just, it was a bit hard to try and prove my prove my worth to the manager so in those it was three years you spent at Livingston in, with a loan at Falkirk in the in the middle That's of right. it mm-hmm. you know, obviously when you went on loan to Falkirk Livingston that was the other the one the Scottish Cup but <laughs> you pulled bugger got a cup tied didn't you so that must have been good was, that was uh, the, the league cup it was the league cup uh, where I played with Falkirk against Harps in the League Cup, unfortunately. And, and, and went back in the January when my loan was finished. I was involved every week before the Cup final. Mm. Um, and then the Cup final came along and I was involved in the squad and the manager made me feel a part of it. I ended up just being the kind of chief bottle opener after the game, just opening them with <laughs> bottles of beer. Um, and that was as good as it got. But a couple of weeks after that, we played in the Scottish Cup semi-final. 
Um, and I was lucky enough to play in that at Hamden in front of a full, a full crowd. So um, I could just the story of my life. Um, just miss out on the big moments all the time. But um, I, I played a part in it, the drinking. I played a part in the celebrations. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, got a goal against Rangers in your time at Livingston that basically mm-hmm. helped Celtic win the league. What what, uh, mm-hmm. what did that feel like? I felt good because I'm a big Celtic fan, um, <laughs> huge Celtic fan. And I'll never forget it because Celtic were playing against Villarreal in the UEFA Cup that night and they were losing. The Rangers fans were bouncing. Uh, they were winning 1-0. They were beating us 1-0. They were screaming, oh, the beach, beach balls have burst to the Celtic fans and I scored to make it 1-1 and I always say to my mates as well it was against the real Rangers no this new Rangers it was <laughs> like it was like Stefan Kloss was a goalkeeper like one of the greats of goalkeepers in world football not just in Scotland yeah. and then in that team as well you had Barry Ferguson you had Michael Moles you had the two the Borb twins the Ronald and Frank the Borb both played so um, Some squad it's it, it's no bad for a wee daft boy if you don't freeze to score against <laughs> like boys that have played in World Cups and European Cup finals. <laughs> uh, quality. So after Livingston, how, the move to Shrewsbury, back mm-hmm. down to England. Um, I read that Mick Wadsworth was quite a big influence in that move as well. Yeah, well, Mick Mick was probably my biggest fan at Newcastle. He really pushed me. He was the one that tried to get me in the squads, and he was the one that really thought I I could have offered something. So obviously I turned him down at Oldham after everything that had happened. So when he, he became assistant manager at Shrewsbury, um, they were back on the phone again. And it was just, I always wanted to come back down to England. I always wanted to test myself again. And it just seemed the right move for me. And a really great club, brilliant club. The old game Meadow was a, a quite an iconic ground. And uh, I loved it down there. Um, and I probably should never have came back up the road after that, but um, circumstances change. Yeah, they weren't far off. The, even, I know they finished tenth that season, but they were like <laughs> six six points off the playoffs or something. I know it was a last, We could actually still have made the playoffs in the last game of the season, but I think we needed to win by four goals. Or and I remember I think Gary Peters, the manager, we, I think we played a four two four, and I think I, I think they lost four three to Cheltenham. So that's where the six points comes from because we just went for it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was one of the craziest games I've been involved in. But um, we, we had a decent season because Shrewsbury had just came up again, mm-hmm. having been in the conference, and they're a decent-sized club. So um, it was good. Great club. Played with some right top players there as well because we had Dave Edwards in the middle of the park. Went on to play with Wolves and Redden played with Wales in the Euros. We had Joe Hart was our goalkeeper. Of course, um, yeah. Went on to play, with, obviously, with Man City in England. So we, we did have a good squad and a really good bunch of boys down there. Oh, spot on. So was it, uh, what attracted you to Gretna? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to ask because mm-hmm. I've, so I've heard like a lot of like Scottish players like, like mm-hmm. yourself like say like you get the opportunity to move to England and yeah. try and try and stay in England. But um, yeah. obviously when you joined Gretna it had promotions and all that so yeah like Aye. what was what was the well again it was Mick Wadsworth um, Mick had left Shrewsbury to go to Gretna um, he was good friends with Brooks Wilson and uh, I remember getting the phone call on the Thursday from the Shrewsbury manager saying that Shrewsbury had accepted a bid and I was free to go and talk to them on a Friday so I was like okay and I, I'm quite I'm a believer that if somebody accepts a bid for you then it's probably time to move on. So uh, I went to speak to Mick and I went to speak to Rowan, manager, and they said I was going to play a big part. Again, they were going to be in the UEFA Cup. They'd lost in the Scottish Cup final the year before. They they had all these grand plans of trying to get into the Premier League in Scotland. And it, it, it just seemed the right good time at, at that moment. Um, had Mick not been there, I probably wouldn't have went. But uh, following Mick about, which I've done again after that, but it's um, it's probably the main reason was Mick Wadsworth and Dave Irons, who was my youth manager at Annan, or my first team manager at Annan. He was also there. Um, and I knew the pl- most of the players. I knew the league. Uh, and 
I, looking back now, it was a mistake, especially after everything that happened. But um, I'm certainly not going to regret it, I suppose. No. Well, to be, to be fair to you, pal, you tore it up in, the, mm. in their promotion season. Uh, clean sweep on the awards, top scorer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, know. I remember going up and watching you play a couple of times up at Gretna. Yeah. I, I, I started that season just incredible and it, it just carried, carried my momentum. But I think I think I got 27 all, se- all that season, all in. And I don't think I scored in the last seven or eight games. I had an absolute beast in the last seven or eight games. And to be fair, the whole team did. I, did, I think we were like miles ahead. <laughs> and, <laughs> Gretner had been a banker every week on a coupon throughout the entire season. And yeah. that, that last yeah. seven weeks of the season, they were just like the one team that let you down every week. That was it. We, and I think I think we only won twice at the last eight games or something. And it was the last game of the season where we scored in, I think, 94th minute uh, against Ross to County. actually win the league up at Ross County. And it was just relief. It really was just relief that we had they fucked it up because <laughs> 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 we were so far in front and uh, uh, it was good times. And to be fair, when you're from Glasgow, there's no better place to win the league and that's away to Dingwall, the furthest away team in Scotland. <laughs> because you can only imagine what that bus like was like on the way home. So oh, it was absolutely brilliant. Oh, well, good. Um, well, the... Then the SPL, it was all kind of downhill there, wasn't it? With yeah. Gretna there, it was a shame, obviously, Brooks Mileson getting as poorly as he did and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so just skim over that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, to be fair, me, me, me and Nath, we, we found some old Gretna shirts in a charity shop a, a few weeks ago right. from, the, from that season. And uh, right. it was like, Oh, just like reminiscing about that. It was like just six <laughs> months, wasn't it? And then that was it. I know. It was. Well, they, they, we played. I was there for six months, but they, they, they finished the season. The SFA gave them money to finish the season. But see, if you look back, some of the players that we got on loan, like I don't know if you all remember, Gretna had Kyle Norton. Yeah, yeah, Kyle on Norton loan. on loan. So we did. We had Kyle and not not. No. We got the goalkeeper, a oh, big goalkeeper for Arsenal on loan. He went on to play for a couple other teams in the Premiership. Cannot remember his name. Oh, I think he was Italian. And, Minoni. Uh, Minoni. Vito Minoni. Minoni. Vito Minoni. He came, <laughs> yeah. He came in. He came, honestly, he came in on loan. And he trained two days at Radio and turned around and went, I'm leaving. <laughs> 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 we were all like, no, Vito Minoni. And he left after two days on loan. He was like, no. He went back down south. <laughs> so he did. So we had him. We had uh, Vito Manoni. We had um, boy f- midfielder from Carlisle. Paul, 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 Paul. Paul Murray. Paul, Paul Murray. Yeah. Was very good player. We had Tony K came. Um, so we had Abdul Osman, who went on to have a decent career I down did. south in Northampton. and Played up here in the Premier League with Party Thistle and stuff. So we did have some decent players. But it was just a shambles. Yeah, like yeah. I, I played in the game on a Wednesday night at home to Inverness. I say at home, it was in Motherwell. Yeah. <laughs> it's the lowest crowd in SPL Premiership history with 600 odd fans. So um, as good as it was for a lot of the time, there was some low, low times in that last six months. I, re- I remember a game quite early on in the season where Gretna went 1-0 up against Celtic. Fabian Yantong oh. scored a free kick. Yeah, and uh, and then got beat two mm-hmm. one I think in the end with two late goals. But I remember, yeah. I remember watching that game in the pub in Carlisle, and uh, I thought that Fabio Antonio looks quality. He was quality, <laughs> to be fair. I'm still in touch with him as well. Um, but he went on to Hibs, but nah, there was a riot after that game, and the changing rooms were myself and remember Eric Partaloo, the Gozzi boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were one 0 up against Celtic. I think two minutes to go. Mm. And we concede a goal, and then with two minutes to go, he d- and I remember Eric no fouling the player. I was screaming, "I'm just foul him, just foul him!" And they never done anything. They went up the part and scored the last like kick of the ball, and I attacked him in the changing room after the game <laughs> for like for no just taking the foul, take the fucking foul, man. 
and it was uh, that was probably the end for me. <laughs> that game, that was a, so uh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't too happy after that. I'm quite emotional and I'm quite volatile at times. So I was, it was, it meant everything to me to just win that game or to get something yeah. from that game, and uh, we should have, and it, all because we just lacked a wee bit of experience at that time. Fairs, man. Um, so from Gretna on to Dundee. Mm-hmm. So, have you just got enough time to go through all my teams? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll probably won't touch on the last couple of years, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, I went to Dundee after that. Uh, I think I got out at the right time at Gretna. I got told to kind of go and find somewhere. Um, and I know you don't know much about Scottish football, but Dundee's a big, big club. Mm. Uh, really big club. And uh, I loved every minute out there. Oh, fez. Goal at Parkhead as well. Goal at Parkhead, aye. Have you seen the goal? I've not, no. Oh, it was I 30 yards out. Goal. It was 30 yards into the top bin. <laughs> um, no, if, for everybody that's seen it, they'll have a laugh. For everybody that's not, it was a peach. But no, I've <laughs> went through in the keeper and Arthur Boric just came out to kick it and missed it. <laughs> and I tapped in for four yards. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter how they're going, man. <laughs> that, that's true because it was in front of my cousin's season ticket, right in front of him. <laughs> and I looked up and he wasn't there. And it was because it was a Scottish Cup. Uh, he's a tight Scotsman and he refused to pay for his ticket. <laughs> so um, I remind him of that quite often, to be fair. So uh, no, ah, it was good to score at Parkhead, but at the end of the day, we got beat 2 1. Yeah. So it's a bit disappointing. Yeah. In bloody more financial turmoil than all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, I, for, a spe- for a spell there, they were calling me calling administration. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I, it was it was the, it was the pleasant. Um, obviously, I was one of the players that got made redundant through administration at Dundee and uh, was thinking about taking a bit of time away for the game, to be honest. Kind of lost a wee bit of love with it. Um, but at the same time, Queen of the South, my hometown, they came in and asked me to join them. And it was the Queen of the South fans that paid my wages. Oh, so right. when that came about, there was only one club I could go to. And um, I'll forever be grateful to them because they made me fall back in love with football at that, at that point. That's I've, I've, I've just uh, I've just moved to... Kakubri and I work in Dumfries. So oh, fuck. <laughs> Get in. Dear me. That, to be fair, that's just as big a commute as I've got for Aaron. Yeah. That's so, time, man. Might, might get one, myself to a Queen's game at some point. I, I get your, do you know what? It's a great club. Really good club. And uh, to be fair, they'll make you feel welcome. They'll probably try and get you to buy a raffle ticket. They'll probably try and get you to buy a towel. <laughs> But uh, no, they'll take you in. And because uh, I took a lot of pain off them when I was at Gretna, especially when I was at Gretna. A lot of pain off the Queen's fans, being a Dumfries boy signing for Gretna. And I always scored against them. Um, so when, the, when it came in saying that they were the ones that were paying for my wages to try and bring them into the club, it said a lot more about them than it did about me. Um, and as I said, I'll be. I'll be very grateful for them because well, I've, I've, I buy their towels. Uh, <laughs> I, I do their pools. I do all that, and uh, it's one of the results I always look look out for. We, we play them on Tuesday night, actually, in the cup with Anna, um, and I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good. That's fun. Um, so, how, how did the how did the move to Ross County come about? Then, um, it was a bit. I'd had a, I'd done well at Queen's House. Scored a few goals for them and I wasn't there long. And there was a bit of upheaval at Queen of the South. We didn't know who they said they didn't know who the manager was going to be. Uh, there was talk of them actually going to train in Carlisle full time. I was I lived in Glasgow at the time. I was like, it wasn't going to suit me. And then I could have signed for pretty much anybody in the first division that year. And uh, Ross County just kind of sold it to me. They told me they were. They were really pushing for the league. They told me the, the targets they were going for in Scotland. And I thought it would be a team to be worth being part of. If they got the players that they wanted, I thought we could have challenged. Uh, and it turned out that way because we, we absolutely tore that league up and I, nobody got near us. Yeah. So, 
might have been administration curse, but like another promotion <laughs> under your belt. So <laughs> that's swings, it. And ra- swings uh, and roundabouts, pal. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Got another promotion. Um, another another winner's medal that I, I couldn't tell you where it is. My wee boy, he's got to be thirteen August. He's got all my medals. Um, says he's going to sell them. So <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got them. But it's 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 important if you ask any footballer, they want to win. Yeah. They want to win leagues, regardless of what level you're at, whether it's the lowest in Scotland to top Scotland or whether it's going to the Euros for England this weekend. Mm. It means the same as that wee medal at the end of a season that shows that you've achieved something. Um, it means the world to you. And when you finish playing football, you've always got the moments you can look back on. And I'm lucky that I've got a few of them. I'm sure promotion part is uh, decent as well. I'm really good at promotion parties. <laughs> uh, if you ask anybody that's played with me, I'm good at the drinking side of the game. Um, I'm good at organising nights out. I'm good at organising Christmas nights out. So we win promotion. I know how far to take it. And <laughs> I take it far. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I pride myself on being the last man standing. And uh, no, I've had a few good parties. And as the twice I've won the league, it's always been up in Dingwall. Once we Gretna, once we Ross County, so um, nobody knows you up there. It's a it's a village up there. It's a middle of nowhere. <laughs> so you can you can kind of get away with things that you wouldn't get away with in Glasgow. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Um, Ross County. Then did you? I've, I've struggled on my notes here somehow. Um, mm-hmm. In the SPL with Ross County, how did, how yeah. did that go? We started really well. We did. We, I think we went the first seven or eight games unbeaten. We drew with Celtic. In fact, Celtic scored a 94th minute equaliser against us to draw 1 1. We drew with Aberdeen. We beat Motherwell. We beat uh, Hibs. And we were done well. We went to Celtic. I think it was Boxing Day. We lost 4 0. The manager said that I'd done really well. It's like just chase shadows for 90 minutes, but done well. And after that, we went to Marbella on a pre. The- we have a, it's like a mini pre-season. We got a mid, we got a winter break up here for two weeks sometimes, and we went to Marbella, and we just clashed. We fell out, and when we came back, it was just time to leave. <laughs> he kind of, he told me he put a squad list up to go for a, a friendly. I wasn't on it, and he told me I was to go and train with the kids. And I seen a thing with the big boy Kevin Ellison mm. celebrating against Derek Adams. And because he'd he been a Morecambe legend or something, yeah, and uh, he celebrated in Derek Adams' face, and that's the same as what happened to me. He just completely froze me out of the club, and I didn't have a choice. I had to leave after that because it, he pretty much made it clear that it was not going to be a place for me. Ah, shit, that it's a shit way to end, especially that I had I, I loved it up there, and I had a great yeah. rapport with the fans, and I'd done well for them, so. Um, it was a, a poor way to end it but at the same time football is football and shit happens so Mont- Green up Martin after that <laughs> we can skip that one skip that one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've got a league runner up and then I've got in brackets I didn't play much so I, we can skip that one. Uh, I hated every single second of it every single second I scored three or four goals just didn't enjoy it at all I, I, I came to the Premier League where the standards were so high, mm. the facilities were so high, and I went to Morton where we basically trained in a cow field. And it was awful. And I just, I was probably up my own arse at that point, thinking <laughs> I'm coming for the Premier League. <laughs> this isn't good enough. And uh, I did not enjoy it one little bit. So, I, 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 running I, up in a league, though. <laughs> <laughs> Out of interest then, um, when you were in the SPL, who, who was your toughest <laughs> opponent that you played against? Oh, God, there was a few, but Frank De Boer was ridiculous. Aye. Um, Jean Alan Boone song. Nice. He Aye. was incredible as well. It was class at Rangers. It was shy oh, at Newcastle. Life, he was shy at Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I remember closing him down in his own box at Ibrox, thinking I've got him here, and they just turned around and megged me in his own box. <laughs> I was like, oh, for fuck. But he was incredible. Um, Victor Wanyama at Celtic was incredible. Van Dijk at Celtic was like, well, we all know yeah. what he's like now, but he was an absolute <laughs> Rolls Royce. 
And then you've got the older boys that I might not have came directly up against, but you had Henrik Larson and Shot Avaladzi at Rangers, like proper players that yeah. have done it at the top level in Europe. Yeah. Um, so I've been quite fortunate to play against a lot of really good players. Like that, that's a thing that like annoys me sometimes about it because down here, mm-hmm. the standard for like Scottish football is it always gets like laughed at. Like it's not. Yeah. But the top flight in Scotland, it, obviously, if you're not in the big two, then it's mm-hmm. quite difficult. But the standard is a decent standard of football. Like, oh, you, you went through all them players there, and they've still yeah. got decent players up there now. You know what I mean? So, just Listen, how good is that standard? I I, I always remember. Davy Irons, when we won the league with Gretna, saying to everybody, be a Premier League player, don't be somebody that's played in the Premier League. And I completely it resonates with me because I was somebody that played in the Premier League. I wasn't a Premier League player. I wasn't good enough. I never quite reached it at that level. Played there with three different clubs, but I just wasn't good enough. It shows you it's there's players in that league. There's John McGinn, one of the top players in the Premier League. You've got Virgil van Dijk, who folk laughed about three, four, five years ago, now the best defender, one of the best players in the world. And it it does get laughed at. But see when the teams come up against each other. Celtic, I remember UEFA Cup season 2004, three. Celtic beat Liverpool. Celtic beat Blackburn. Uh, Rangers beat Leeds when Leeds won the league. See whenever you come up against each other. But it wasn't that long ago Celtic beat Man United when Man United were the top team under Ferguson and we went through in the Champions League. So I think we get laughed at it. Listen, it was only two weeks ago, Scotland went down to Wembley and passed yeah. England off the park. Mm. So it was. And probably should have won the game. And we're now talking England are going to the finals of Euros. So I think there's a bit of, a bit of stuck-upness, if that makes yeah, sense. Uh, I'd agree. That, yeah, definitely. That, but it's the same... See if you don't know, but I'm not being this. England have got the same about the Bundesliga. Yeah. Like they played Denmark the other night. Denmark was a team full of te- players from the Bundesliga, Serie A, the Premiership. But because of no household names, I think there's a bit of, well, superiority. Yes. Um, and I'll tell you what, for the first 60 minutes, I bet you were shiting yourselves <laughs> because they were decent. Yeah, they were um, playing quite good. But then, uh, listen. I put on Twitter the other day, I think England are a cracking team. I just think that he's looked down your nose at a few different countries and it, it's yeah, probably it's probably that. come back to haunt you at times. Yeah, it's, definitely. It definitely stems from pundits and media that don't oh, do any yeah, research definitely. outside. Because you, you can tell in abundance when the playing when the England national side, mm-hmm. for example, or an English team's playing the Champions League and they hardly talk about any of the players from exactly. the other team. This is like Jaden Sancho barely getting a kick mm-hmm. in his tournament. I know, I know we've gone on to get yeah. to the final and that, but Sancho's been one of the best players in Europe over the past I know. two or three years. I know. Um, it's incredible, but I'd, I'd love to see, I hope he's winning Sunday, but I hope he's get pumped. <laughs> 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 so, sorry, boys. Sorry. Um, no, no, that's, that's fair. Quickly, that's fair. Just quickly sticking with international football, and forgive me if my maths is incorrect here, but I have got in front of me, from 2002 to 2010, you scored 119 goals, right? And obviously Scotland's qualification period at that point yeah. was a bit up and down so I just wanted to know like were you ever in conversations about ever making a squad were you ever close to making a no. squad because <laughs> no not no. even close no but you've got to remember what level I was scoring the goals at yeah um, I was probably League 2 in England um, Scottish First Division listen to be fair but at that point you would have had Sean Maloney playing for Scotland Kenny Miller Stephen Fletcher we see where Umar got a couple, though, to be fair, mate. That is true. I've <laughs> scored the goal that he missed. I, don't know if he's known I was that actually at that game that he missed as well. Set at hand then. I was at that game. Oh. <laughs> so, and then Chris Boyd, Chris Boyd, who's the top, he's the top goal scorer ever in Scottish football, he couldn't get a game in front of Chris in the limo. So, um, no, I was a million miles away from him. A million miles. You maybe just to, if you do, if you were playing a bit earlier when Bertie Vaught was in charge, you'd uh, you'd maybe got a crack. To be to be fair, if if you two had scored the five-a-side goals under Bertie Vaught, there was a chance you'd have got called up. 
So I just thought I'd ask up. because you always make the Scotland squad on Championship Manager and Football Manager around that time. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I, I remember my mates used to talk about it. Uh, they used to always sign me on loan for Newcastle and they would always sign Mark Kerr. And oh, Mark Kerr was quality. <laughs> aye. And they used to always talk, you and Kerzo? I was like, oh, okay. I wish Football Manager was real because I'd be a millionaire. I wouldn't be an electrician, that's for sure. <laughs> so. Right, well, we've got to move on to Celtic Nation then. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Especially, like, we're, we're, we're technically based in Carlisle, so Celtic, yeah. Celtic Nation was quite quite the talk of the sports pages when that when that whole thing came about. How, how, how did that come about for you? Mick Wadsworth. Um, of course. <laughs> Mick yeah. was manager, and uh, he phoned me. Just I was still at Morton, and he phoned me up. Saying, listen, I'm going to take this job. There's a guy from America, but he's from Glasgow. He, he wants to put money into a club and change the name. And I kind of thought it was pie in the sky. I was like, all right, okay, what, Mick? I'll speak to you after. So then it, it followed up again. I went down and met him. And I met uh, Stephen Skinner, who was the chairman. And they kind of sold it to me. I was like, Do you know what? This, this could be okay. And to be fair, people up here, would stick their nose up at that level. Mm. But it's a decent level down there. You've got teams that have come through that level, like Salford, Spennymoor, FC United of Manchester. They all come from that level. And uh, it was decent. And I loved it. Mick didn't stay about long. I think, it was <laughs> too, I think Mick, Mick was based in Barnsley. So I thought it was a bit, a bit of a commute for him. Mm. And he'd made me the captain and, I was loving it, and at the time I was I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But they brought in Willie McStay, and obviously I knew all about Willie McStay if he'd been to Scotland, and he's a top top man, top coach. His brother was my hero growing up, Paul McStay, and uh, it was we were really really unlucky that season. We were just uh, we just got caught behind a team that were flying that year. So I think we finished second. Aye. So I get on Spenny Moore. Had a good season and we drew with them with four games to go at home. And if we'd won that, we would have jumped above them. Um, so it was a cracking season. I loved every minute of it. And again, I'm still in touch with a lot of the boys. In fact, that's where I met Peter Murphy. So yeah. obviously played with Murph there. And that's where I met him. Still in touch with Skip. Um, still in touch with a couple of the boys down there. So uh, I loved it. It was a brilliant club. It was just a bit chaotic at times <laughs> I, uh, I noticed when, when I was cleaning out some boxes and I had like a load of football scarves and I found this green and white one and clicked them ahead we went to a match one day and they were giving out free scarves yeah. I was like I was that's right that Ignatian scarf. Oh, it was <laughs> mad because I, I was the captain down there we had this random lassie who Carlisle who'd come dressed as a leprechaun <laughs> oh yeah I actually remember that but, like she was about six foot five <laughs> so she was like up to here and me and I had to walk hand in hand with this leprechaun that was six foot five, dressed up and greet her. I was like, this has gone too far. <laughs> this has gone too far. Um, but no, it was a good laugh. Um, great season. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I just wish it had lasted a wee bit longer because there was definitely potential there for it to be a decent side club. Absolutely. Do you have any Nathan Luscombe stories? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, nah, he was... Mental. Um, I remember <laughs> a, a Christmas night out. We went to House of Smith in Newcastle. Don't know if you've been in it. And I've went to the barn. I've came back. And there's steps, and he was lying on the steps, gone sleeping. And folk <laughs> were like pouring drinks over his head, trying to wake him up. And there was nothing. And we managed to get him up. And this lassie's like, "Are you all right? You're right." He went, "YouTube me, me, John, uh, me, Jordan Henderson." Skill school, and that's what he did. They walked away from her. And do you remember Soccer AM used to do skill school? It's Jordan Henderson and Nathan Luscombe. <laughs> so he was absolutely buckled. And after being asleep for 20 minutes, having about four drinks pulled over his head, that's the first thing he came out of his mouth. So that, that's uh, <laughs> that's not his claim to fame. I used to call him the wee guy at uh, Ali G, the wee guy with a hat. <laughs> um, I used to say that we guy for LG, but I've not spoke to him in a long time. But he, done, he was he was mental and probably should have done better in the game. He just yeah, what a player! 
said the other day, uh, attitude. Yeah, I was I'm like we're Sunderland supporters, and uh, I was a yeah. I was a season ticket holder at the time where we had got to the like FA Youth Cup semi final. It was that squad of Henderson, right. Waghorn, um, right. John Egan, uh, Nathan Luscombe, and uh, I, Nathan Luscombe. He was out of them all. He was one of the ones that was tipped to yeah, like make it in the first team. Because I used to slag him off all the time because he was obviously he supported Sunderland and that and. Uh, I used to say, I, f- I fucking scored more goals at Slade than I like than you. <laughs> and he'd be like, shut up. Because I scored there with the Newcastle Reserves. And uh, he used to wind them up a bit all the time. Why like, you never even played with New- Sunderland. How many goals he scored at Slade than I like? None. <laughs> shut up. So, uh, <laughs> it's like, no, but he's a, he's a right good lad, so he was uh, mental, but nice good lad. That's fucking cool. Um, so then back up north of the border. Mm-hmm. And, uh, probably the most... Stable time in your career then, Stenhouse Muir? Yeah, I was there for a long time. I was there for, I was a reserve coach. I was player, captain, first team coach, assistant manager, and then got the manager job. So I think I'd done every role there apart from kit man. <laughs> um, probably done that a few times as well, but no, I love it. Great club. Got a lot of time for it. Really looking forward to going back this year with Annan. Um Get on well with the directors and the board. And um, I, listen, it, it maybe no ended the way I wanted it to end. Obviously, it didn't work out quite as well as we planned, but had a, real, a lot of really good moments there. Good stuff. So, after Stenhouse Muir, it was just a bit of lower league stuff, yeah? And I just, keep yourself I was busy. Chucking it. That was it. Yeah. I was chucking it, and then people start phoning you. Do you want to come and play? You're like, I'll go play. Yeah, I'll go play. Uh, you realise that you're no as good or as nimble as you used to be. And then at the end of last season there, I got a phone call for Aaron, seeing if I'd be interested in going down there. Fair enough, pal. Um, so, out of everybody that you ever played with, mm-hmm. who, who was your like most gifted teammate? Not including Newcastle Reserves. Ah, I know, I know. Can I, I always say that. I never played with Newcastle. I just trained every day. Uh, no, well, obviously, David Fernandez at Livingston was incredible. Robert Snodgrass at Livingston was good. Oh. Lee Griffiths at Dundee was brilliant. And I played with a boy called Guillermo Amor at Livingston. He played with Barcelona. Oh, there was and, a, was there Zerati uh, that played at Livingston as well? Zerati. He played for Real Madrid. Yeah, Zarati, he was incredible. Yeah, but uh, I kind of always kind of go back to David Fernandez. Mm. He was just really that good. Um, just one of these players that you couldn't get a ball off. Uh, low centre of gravity. He reminded you like a South American striker rather than a Spanish striker, yeah. but um, incredible football player. But probably between him, Robert Snodgrass and Lee Griffiths. What's the, I what's probably the... forgot about somebody and they're going to contest me. <laughs> but, oh, sorry. What, what, what was the favourite goal that you scored as well, pal? Oh, um, this, I've probably been asked this a hundred times and I've probably changed my answer a hundred times. Um, listen, I scored, I scored in the Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic, but it was a consolation. 3-1 we got beat. Yeah. But sold out, Scottish Cup semi-final, live on the telly. Uh, all my family there. I was only what 21, 22. So that'll live with me forever. It's still on YouTube. Show my boy all the time. Kid on that. Oh, I found this dude. Look at this. No. <laughs> uh, it's uh, no, but my favourite goal of all time was, was I scored a 94th minute equaliser for Ross County away to Fall Cup. Boxing Day. We were four points clear of them. If if they'd won, it'd been one point. And we managed to get that point to stay four points clear, and it was huge. Um, and it's probably my favourite goal that I've scored. Complete sclaff, ninety fourth minute, <laughs> and uh, but it, it really was. I think that was the point we realised we were going to win on. And uh, it's probably my favourite goal that I've ever scored. Spot on. Well, that's it for my questions, Nathan. Unless you've got anything, <laughs> no worries. And anything left? Um. Oh well. Best atmosphere you've ever played in? Maybe it's that semi-final. No, to, to be fair, Tynecastle up here, where Hearts play, 
Yeah. Um, and you could ask a lot of Scottish players. Tynecastle's incredible. It's dead close. Uh, high stands. You feel as though the fans are right on top of you. That's a really, really good stadium to play at. Um, as a Celtic fan, we, I played in a game uh, with Livingston where the, it was trophy day for, for Celtic. So that was a full crowd, 60,000, and they sang for the first minute to the last minute. Um, so, but in terms of a normal match experience, Tynecastle is incredible. If you ever get the chance to get up for a Hearts Hibs game at Tynecastle, get yourselves up because I'll tell you what, you'll love every minute. Of it. It's proper intense. Everybody's on top of you. Um, Tynecastle is brilliant to put. Like it. Um, Favourite manager you've played under? Oh, oh God. Been a few. Uh, I loved Gary Peters at Shrewsbury. He was brilliant. Really good. Played with John Hughes at Falkirk. He was great. Davy Hay at Livingston. But um, I've got I'd probably go with Dave Irons. Davy was my manager at Annan yeah. um, when I was 19 year old. And if it wasn't for Davy, it wasn't for Annan, I would never have had a career in football. So I'd probably go with Dave Irons. Nice, nice. Um, if you've ever had one, what's the best chant you've ever had? Oh, no. I, I used to have that stupid, because my name's uh, so many syllables. Paul <laughs> and Man, man, man. So I liked that one because that's what they all sung. But I remember going back to play against Livingston and instead of calling McMenamin, it was fuck off McMenamin. <laughs> and I thought that was quite creative. <laughs> I thought that was quite creative. So my favourite chant would probably be fuck off McMenamin. I, I like good. it. But I did score. I did, I've spoke to the Livy boys about this. I did score two that day, maybe from 3 1. So I had the last laugh. But I'm, I'm quite up for a bit of part of the fans. I thought it was quite good. I like it. Um, last one. Um, you can pick yourself if you want to. Uh, oh, if, fuck, no. You don't have to. Uh, if you could, with all, all the players that you've played with, who makes mm-hmm. your five-a-side team? Yeah, boys that I've played with? Oh, yeah. I'm certainly, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't even make the top 20. <laughs> um, goalkeeper, Joe Hart. So I would, I'd have to play Big Marv at the back because he could just do the back himself. <laughs> I would go with... Midfield, mm. Robert Snodgrass and Dave Edwards. Nice. And then up front, Dave Fernandez. And that's me leaving at Lee Griffiths, but on a five side team, then I've not got much of an option. So, <laughs> uh, in fact, get rid of the goalie. They play some football for goalies. Joe Hart can beat it. I'm just putting Marv at the back. He'll yeah. cover the goals as well. And Lee Griffiths can go up front with Dave Fernandez. Nice. I like it. Good answer. Nice. <laughs> nah, get rid of the goalkeepers. Game's better with <laughs> <laughs> Don't do tell you, the goalies that I am in though. I was about to say you can uh, drop that to Pete Murphy tomorrow just before kick off and get the starting lineup changed. Murph already knows what I think of goalkeepers. I've told him. <laughs> uh, and do you know what? We've just signed we've just signed a boy that I've played with four or five clubs. So um I he'll he'll listen to this. Do you know Greg Fleming? Is it hang me? So we've signed yeah. Flem. But he'll get told tomorrow as well. I don't like goalkeepers. <laughs> Make sure you give Stephen Swingleus an extra whip, just for me. Right, you kidding on? He's battered me for five years playing up here. <laughs> I'm like, I hated, hated playing against him. Even in training, I hate training against him. Now that I'm lucky enough that I can pick the teams, I'll always make sure I'm in his team so that he can't kick me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, good, he? he's good, isn't he? He's good, isn't he? Do you he's, think he could I, have been a lot, he, played a better standard or...? I'm not, I think I definitely. He's the oldest 28 year old in the world. Yeah, well, he I, looks. He said a hard paper on the Steve. Oh, I said to him at the start of pre season, I said, What age are you now, anyway? I was expecting him to say 34, 35. He went 28. I went, Fuck off, you're not 28. <laughs> I actually Googled it. I Googled him. I was like, Oh my God, he's actually 28. But great big guy, great person to have around the club. Um, obviously, our captain. And do you know what? He's, uh, he's what everybody else should look up to at their club because uh, he's a top man. Yeah, Got a, a lot of time lad. for him. He's a lovely lad. Just mental on the pitch. <laughs> Nuts. Kick his granny. That's what we say in Scotland. He would kick his granny. So, yeah. <laughs> I've got my wee lassie here sitting here waving to me. I'm like, what are you wanting? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's uh, fine. That's fine. We can, uh, well, that, that, that's it, mate. Thank you very no much worries. for coming on. Really Thanks for having us, lads.
Really, as I said to you, I listened to skips. I thought it was brilliant. Um, no, nah, I wish he's well, mate. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again thank very much. No worries, guys. Good luck for the season, pal. Cheers, mate. Well, Sick get yourselves on. up to Annan for a I wee day out. Oh, I <laughs> Cheers, lads. <laughs> Take thanks, care, man. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Bye. 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 So then, that was Colin McMenamin. Hope you enjoyed it as much as me and Jamie um, made it. Uh, apologies on Dylan's behalf for not being here. Uh, big quiz Sorry, night at the time for Dylan. Just wanted, yeah. to, just wanted to say, um, each time we record with Next Pro, there's a bit of a learning curve and definitely learned from this one to watch some videos of goals before. <laughs> <laughs> The only one I ever really seen was that you know the screamer against Celtic. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I watched him after it, and uh, he scores an absolute peach of a dink for Queen of Herself outside the box. <laughs> Love the goal, but now that it was a uh, it was great crack. It was great. Yeah, really, absolutely. Really good. Thanks very much for calling on, mate. Absolutely. Very much. And um, thank you to Apple Tree Pub in Carlisle, T Seven Clothing. All the usual social media stuff. You know where to find us. Just search us. We'll be there. Find us on Twitter at Prawn Podcast. Find us on Instagram at Prawn underscore Sandwich. Give us a follow and a review. See you next week. Ciao. Bye, everyone.